Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering the basics of Firebase real-time database, which I have already done in the previous one, except that in this video, we will be making the different actions through server-side. In the previous tutorial, we dealt with the database from the client side, which means that the actions taken go directly from the user's browser to the database. In this tutorial, we are going to make it so a user sends an HTTP request with some data to a backend where it can be transformed, and then it gets sent to the database. Check the link in the description, it contains a good article explaining the main differences between the two methods, so you know which one to use in your next project. First of, let's create a project on the Firebase console. I have reached the limit of the number of projects allowed, so I'll use one of the projects that I have already created. Ok, that done, let's create a database by clicking on the Firebase tab, then hit the Create Database button. Choose Real-Time Database in the drop-down, and here you go, you have your newly created database ready to be filled with data. Now, let's create the project files. So, create a folder, and then use the npm init command, and fill your different project's metadata, then install Express. Let's create app.js and create a basic Express.js app. I have already NodeMon installed globally in my machine, so make sure to install it as well if you want to use it too.
Now, let's add Firebase functions to our project. To do so, we need to install Firebase Admin first. Now, we need to import it using require. To configure the admin functionalities, or let's just say, let Firebase know that the user of this machine is actually the owner of the project created on the console. Go back to the Firebase console, project settings, then the service accounts tab and generate a new private key. Make sure it's not JS on the checkbox and then copy the code and paste it in the app.js file. Copy the JSON files path and set it to the service account variable and that should be enough. This is another method to do the same thing except that this is the more secure and strongly recommended way of doing it. We need to set the credential using the application default function which will look for an environment variable. To set the environment variable, we need to use the following command. The only downside of this method is that you need to reset the environment variable again if you once close the terminal. Another thing to add to the project is Axios, which will handle sending the different requests from the client side. Also, another very important thing to add is Express.json, which is a built-in middleware function in Express. This function will make us able to get the data from the HTTP requests sent from the client side. This should be enough for the first part of this tutorial. 
I will see you in the next part where we will be exploring the different functionalities of the Firebase real-time database. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.